Hi, Sam from iFootage here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use our iFootage Moco app with our Shark Slider Nano. So first things first, you need to make sure that the iFootage Moco app is installed on your phone. You can download it from the App Store or the Google Play Store. Now once it's downloaded, open it up and please make sure to also have Bluetooth enabled within the app. Now once the app is open, you'll also want to mount the phone to your slider. So we provide our phone mount. All you have to do is simply go push in the lock on the slider, push the mount in and twist. Then the phone mount will screw straight onto your slider. Now you want to take your phone, simply open, open the grips up, slide your phone in just like so, and then your phone is in the slider. Now we'll obviously want to power up the slider too. So plug in your battery and turn the slider on. And as you can see, the slider starts to come to life. Once the slider goes through its calibration process, it will prompt you on screen to place your phone at a 90 degree angle. For this instance, your 90 degree angle will be like this, so that your phone is horizontal. Once you are in this position, just make sure you click on the screen and click calibrated. That will bring you to the quick start menu on there. But also in the app, we want to click connect. This will open up your Bluetooth settings. Then you'll see the Shark Slider Nano pop up on the prompts. You then want to click this button here. This searches and connects you to the slider. Here it will bring up your battery level of the slider and also the firmware version. If, for instance, there is a new firmware update, you'll also be prompted here to update your slider. Now all you've got to do is click next. As you can see here, we've got two options. One is for use smartphone, the other is for use camera. For this instance, I'm showing you how to use the smartphone app. So we're going to be using the smartphone. Just click enter. And now it will come back to a horizontal. So as you can see here, we are currently in the time-lapse menu. Now to change which mode you are in, you want to click at the top here. This will then open you up to video and stop motion. First of all, I'm going to show you how to use the video. So we're going to go into the video mode. Now here you have many different features. For instance, at the top, you've obviously got your Bluetooth control. Then you've got wide. Now wide is the type of lens you're using. So obviously with the iPhones, you have a wide, a telephoto, and just a standard. So depending on which lens you want to use, whether you have the standard iPhone 11 or iPhone 12, or the iPhone 12 Pro or iPhone 11 Pro, you'll have the option to change which kind of lens you want to use just here. So here I've obviously got wide and ultra wide because I'm on just the standard 11. For now, I'm gonna keep it in wide. But if you do have a 12 Pro or 11 Pro, you'll have telephoto too. Now once you've chosen what kind of lens you wanna use, at the top here, you've also got the choice to turn on HDR. You've got LCD, which just activates the LCD on the slider. Here, you've got the choice to flip the camera. So if you want to use the front facing camera or the rear facing camera, you've got the choice to loop. This ready option just readies your move and then obviously you'll click start when you're ready and that will begin the A to B movement. This square here opens you up to the photo album. So that's where all of your videos and time lapses are all stored. At the bottom here, you've got the time, so that's the length of movement. So you can set this to as long as you want. So I'm going to just pre-prep it to have a 20 second move. There we go. So that'll take 20 seconds when I set the move. Just here, you've got manual set key. Now the manual set key allows you to access the quick start menu just by clicking this. Now you can also change your shutter value here. So currently it's at 1 800th, but say I want it at 1 50th, which is the standard film version, you can set it to 1 50th. You also have the control of your ISO, so I can set it from 25 all the way to 880, as it's just an iPhone. So I'm gonna just leave it on 400. In the center of the screen here, you have exposure and focus. This just means that you can lock your exposure and you can also lock your focus if you want. So that's all dependent on what sort of object you are focusing on. By opening this menu here, you have the choice to manually keyframe your focus and your zoom depending on what you're focusing on. And in the bottom left here, we have settings. Now in here, you have a variety of different settings like anti-shake, lamp, screen, the option to reset, level, delay, save original, guide, and your resolution, and also your white balance if you need to change it. Now you may experience some unwanted jitters if you're using any of the iPhone models below the latest iPhone. This is just because of the lenses and how the gyros work. So we do also offer an anti-shake option within the app. 
You also have the choice to change the resolution. So here you can go from anything from 720, 30 FPS, all the way to 4K 60. But for this instance, I'm just gonna put us at 4K 24 FPS. Perfect. We'll click off and we'll go back to the menu. So now we're all set up to add in a move. So I'm gonna focus on this battery here. We're gonna push it forward slightly. We're then gonna bring our phone up. Just make sure that the subject's in. So now we're gonna, what we want, now what we want to do is bring out the focus and zoom quick start menu, which is just a quick slide from the left to the right. So here you've got your focus control. So this is how you focus on the image. Here you've got your zoom control. So I wanna set my A point to say, to say we're gonna go from here on the battery. Maybe I want it zoomed in slightly and we're just gonna bring. So maybe we want it zoomed in slightly and nice and focused on the battery itself. Perfect. Once the move's set, click set A. Then we'll want to move to our B point. So we'll move over to our B point. So our B point say is here. We're now gonna zoom in a bit more and maybe you want to just check focus, make sure it's all focused properly and set B. Now, once you've set your A and B point, you'll simply click ready on the screen. This will set up the camera and go to its start point. So then click ready again. This will move it to its A point. Once it's at its A point, all you've got to do is click go. And now the slider will start to move. Now I'm going to walk us through our time-lapse mode. So to access our time-lapse mode, all you've got to do is click on here and go to time-lapse. Now time-lapse is very similar to when you set a time-lapse using the slider and a camera. However, we are obviously shooting it on our phone. So to set up the time-lapse features, just like you do on video, you have the choice of lens, you have the choice of using HDR, you can flip the camera, you can loop it, you can also obviously access your photo menu, you can change the interval, so this is, so this is the gap between when every photo is taken. Currently it's at one second, I'm gonna leave it there, but you can set it up to 60 seconds. So I'm gonna keep it at one. You've got your output time. So say you're taking a photo every second for standard video, that will come to 24 frames per second, which means say I want a two second video, that will be 48 frames overall. So that'll be perfect for me. You've then got the choice to set your frames manually, obviously using the manual set key. You can change your shutter, ISO, and you can obviously access the settings menu. So, just like we did in the video, we're gonna set up our focus and zoom controls. We are gonna set the time lapse up to go around this battery here. We're gonna focus here and set A. Then we're gonna move it to our B point, zoom in a bit more, and make sure it's in focus. It's all focused there and set B. Now our time lapse is set up, we'll click ready, click ready again. This will take us back to our A point. And then we'll simply have to click go, just like that. And now the slider will go through and take a photo every single second over a 48 second period. Now once the move is done, you'll have a prompt saying that it's completed. So Obviously, we want to see where the images are saved. So by going into the album menu just here, you'll open up into photo and video. Obviously, we've made some videos, so we we'll wanna click on video. And right here, you've got all of your videos saved. So for instance, this is our time-lapse that we just shot. You can obviously download it or share it or delete it if you're not happy with it. And you've got the videos we shot earlier as well. If you've got any more questions, please make sure to contact our customer support services or join our iFootage users group on Facebook where you can talk to me. I'm Sam from iFootage and I'll see you in the next video.